Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss about a very popular, a very famous 20th century linguist and literary theorist, Roman Jacobson. Roman Jacobson is a 20th century Russian-born American linguist and literary theorist. Even though he was originally from Russia, he moved to America. We will know about that as we discuss. He was a very important figure in Russian formalism as well as in structuralism. Also, he has been part of three major linguistic schools, the Moscow Linguistic Circle, Prague School of Linguistics and Linguistic Circle of New York. Let's look into the important details of his life and through that we will also cover these three important linguistic schools. So talking about Roman Jacobson, he was born into a Jewish family and that too a well-to-do family. He was financially stable. He did not have any financial troubles as a young man. Even as a child, he was very fascinated about language. So he learned language in college. He learned in Moscow University. And here he became part of this linguistic group called the Moscow Linguistic Circle. As it is known from the name, the Moscow Linguistic Circle is a group of linguists from Moscow. And they were active during the early 20th century, that is around 1915 to 1924 approximately. And this was the period when they would come together, they would discuss language, linguistics and phonology, morphology and all these elements that are related to language. And among the members of this Moscow Linguistic Circle, we have very two important people for this particular video, Roman Jacobson and Nikolai Trubitskaya. Here I have specially mentioned Nikolai Trubitskaya's name because he is one of the important collaborators with Roman Jacobson. He is a very important linguist who had stayed along with Roman Jacobson in putting forward many of his studies that we will discuss soon. So keep in mind these two names, they were associated with the Moscow Linguistic Circle. There were other members too, if you want you can google it up. Now this group was inspired by Sushor and they followed many of Sushor's theories on structuralism. Now according to Sushor, language should be learned in a synchronic way. That is there is synchronic and diachronic, two ways of learning language. In the diachronic approach, when you learn language, you go through the history of language, the evolution of language, how language has reached here. But whereas in the synchronic approach, the history is not given importance. We learn language at a particular period of time. This was, this synchronic approach was followed by Sushor and so the same approach was followed by Moscow Linguistic Circle too. And they studied language as a structured system. That is, language has a structure, there are elements in it and the meaning of these elements come from the relations that they share. We have discussed this in the video on structuralism. So these are the basics about the Moscow Linguistic Circle. Now along with that, there was another group called the Opojas, O-P-O-J-A-Z, in which we have Viktor Slavsky, who is the one famous for his theory on defamiliarization. Now, this group of Viktor Slavsky is not important, but I have noted this here because the Moscow Linguistic Circle and the Opojas. These two linguistic groups were responsible for the growth of Russian formalism and linguistics. So, this particular group that he was in was very important. After his studies in Moscow University, he moved in 1920 to Prague for his doctoral studies in Charles University. And here again, he is becoming part of another linguistic group called Prague School of Linguistics, which was established in 1926. Again, this is a group of linguists and literary critics and here these people were in Prague. The Prague School of Linguistics was established by William Mathesius, who was the English professor in Charles University, the university in which Roman Jacobson was doing his doctoral degree. This group also had their own journal, which was titled The Travox. 
Now, this period, when this group, Prague Linguistic Circle, was formed, established, this was the period when World War II was happening and, of course, these uh, nations were taking active part. They were involved actively in the World War. And soon, because of the World War, the journal, the Travox, uh, was also entered soon. Now, the two people we met earlier in the Moscow Linguistic Circle, Roman Jacobson and Nikolai Turbitsky, they both were also part of Prague School of Linguistics. We know about Roman Jacobson because he came here. Nikolai Trubitsky also for some reason, he also had to move here and he was also part of this group. And Roman Jacobson this time, he was one of the founding members of Prague School of Linguistics. So what was happening in the circle? What did they do? So the members of the Prague School of Linguistics, they developed methods for the analysis of sounds, speech sounds, the vowels, the consonants, how should we learn it. Uh, they analyzed different methods for that. And they developed methods of structuralist literary analysis. And for every great step that Roman Jacobson has taken in these two areas, in the study of sounds and in the structuralist literary analysis, for several of his important ideas, Nikolai Turbitsky was always a collaborator, a major collaborator with him. So this school continued, uh, but they had to disband in 1952. But still, the Prague School of Linguistics uh, was thought to be one of the first or one of the major schools that learned phonology. Phonology, the study of speech sounds, uh, were there even before then. But still, as a major discipline, the people who have bought phonology as a modern discipline of study was Roman Jacobson and Nikolai Turbitsky. So even today, the school is a major force in linguistic study. So soon, uh, Roman Jacobson, he got his PhD in 1930. After 10 years, he had completed his doctoral studies. He started his career, he went into teaching. And after uh, a while of getting into his career, he had to flee Prague because of the war. And that is how he reaches US. And here again, uh, he comes as an immigrant and he becomes the co-founder of Linguistic Circle of New York, the third important school. So here again, these are people, linguists, who are from New York. And this establishment is still there even today. But today it's known by a different name. Uh, it's known by the name ILA, International Linguistic Association, because now it contains people not only from New York, but all over the world. They also have their own journal, which is titled The Word. So Roman Jacobson could be thought of as an important figure who has been part of very important schools that had been created to create a new approach in linguistics. And maybe it was possible because he was from a financially stable family, from a well-to-do family. It was the same with all the other members of the groups too. Because when World War II was going on, they could afford to be part of these groups. Let's look at some more important points about Roman Jacobson. Roman Jacobson coined the term structural linguistics. Now, this was a term that is derived from Sochor's work titled Course in General Linguistics. So, what is structural linguistics? Structural linguistics includes all these theories that are put forward, which look at language as a semiotic system whose elements are defined by their relationship to other elements within the system. Now, this is what Sochor also told. Sochor said that language is like a structure. Language is a system and there are a lot of elements in the language. And if you want to understand the meaning of one element, you should see what is the relationship that it has with the other elements in the language. We have talked about this in structuralism, the video before. So what idea Sochor has given has been put a name by Roman Jacobson. That's all. So he was influenced by Sochor and for this idea that language is a structure, Language is a semiotic system. It has elements and they are defined by their relationship to other elements within the system. So this idea has been given a name, coined the uh, name Structural Linguistics by Roman Jacobson. 
द नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट दैट यू शुड रिमेंबर अबाउट हिम इज दैट रोमन जेकबसन फाउंडेड द मॉडर्न डे डिसिप्लिन फोनोलॉजी नाउ द स्टडी ऑफ फोनीम्स और मोरफीम्स और लैंग्वेज हैज एक्सिस्टेड इवन बिफोर रोमन जेकबसन ही इज नॉट द फर्स्ट पर्सन टू बिगिन एनी ऑफ दिस बट just like how we would learn a subject called geography or how we would learn a subject called english literature or how we would learn physics phonology came to be learned like a subject it became a modern discipline because of roman jacobson so he is the person who founded phonology as a discipline as a branch of study and how did he help with this he developed a lot of techniques in order to analyze linguistic sound systems and here too we have the collaborator we talked about nikolai durbitsky who has been part of all these studies and analysis now let's look at the next point metaphor and metonymy two aspects of language and two types of aphasic disturbances this was an essay by roman jacobson which was published in 1956 look at the first column which is language now here roman jacobson says there are two aspects of language the first one is paradigmatic and the second one is syntagmatic now in the first step that is paradigmatic whenever we have to say something we have a lot of words lot of vocabularies we choose the right words the appropriate words suppose i need to say my bottle is green in color i should have these words bottle green i shouldn't use the word yellow instead of green so i should be able to approximately take the words the correct words so this selection of words come under paradigmatic and after the selection of the words again we have another process we have to put these words in order we have to combine these words in order and this comes under syntagmatic now it is based on this that we are going to see what study roman jacobson has made uh, on the aphasic patients now aphasic is a language disorder it is the inability of a person to communicate properly so what roman jacobson did is that he uh, brought a lot of people who are affected by this aphasic disorder uh, patients who have this problem and he uh did studies on them he learned them and he understood that there are two types of aphasia the first one he named it as similarity disorder and the second type was contiguity disorder in this first type of aphasia the patients were having a trouble with choosing words i put the arrow that the similarity disorder is related to the selection and contiguity is related to the combination so in similarity disorder the patients were not able to select they were having trouble with words which which were kind of similar so they couldn't select proper words and thus they had this learning disorder and in the second type that is contiguity disorder the words getting the words were okay these patients had good vocabulary but they couldn't combine it properly they couldn't associate the words properly so this was the study that he made so there are these two aspects of language and we have found uh, that roman jacobson realized that there are two variations in aphasia in learning disorders one is similarity disorder and the other is contiguity disorder so and these are related to now he says the two aphasic disorders correspond to two figures of speech metaphor and metonymy that is similarity disorder could be associated corresponded with metaphor and contiguity disorder with metonymy see just like how we told there is a problem in selection because of the similarity between words metaphor is also the same it's also a figure of speech which works on this principle of similarity the same way metonymy works with associating one word with another word that is related to this So Roman Jacobson says uh, imagine metaphor and metonymy in two different poles like north pole and south pole so language has a bipolar structure on one side we have metaphor on the other side we have metonymy and language moves it keeps moving between the metaphor and metonymy that is when we speak uh, if you notice how we speak to another person 
we either speak because of the similarity of the topics maybe we were talking about one person who is sad and we remember about another person who is also sad because of a similar situation so because of similarity the topic is changed from this to that so one topic leads to another through similarity like the metaphor and coming to metonymy sometimes we talk about one topic and then move to another because of the association we associated with something else and then we move on so the way we speak oscillates between these two poles between metaphor and metonymy so language according to roman jacobson has a bipolar structure and because there is a problem in one of these in this aphasic patients that is why they couldn't communicate properly they couldn't either select properly or they couldn't combine properly or uh, talking about the figures of speech they couldn't uh, move from one topic to another with similarity or through association so this is another idea put forward by roman jacobson with that i am winding up my video i hope it was useful for you please let me know your suggestions in the comment section thank you so much for watching